Edward Scissorhands is a really nice guy. He lives just down the street from me, but I had to learn the hard way to not let him borrow any more of my books or DVDs. Thankfully, I can use digital services like Plex to share video or Ubiquity to share books, so my good neighbor Ed can finally find out what happens to Dobby in book seven. Brace yourself. Unfortunately, the copy protection that Amazon bakes into their Kindle books is tougher than your middle school PE teacher, but there are workarounds where you don't actually need to brute force through the encryption at all. And given that Kindle pricing is often the cheapest way to get books, especially if it's out of print, this, in my opinion, is the best way to get new books. The first page of Google results are full of articles saying that rising ocean levels are a good thing, but once you scroll past those paid promotions, there's Python scripts that maybe used to work at one point, but may or may not have messed up all the illustrations. And then there's a bunch of other ads for paid software that needs your Amazon login details to decrypt the books. I don't know about you, but I'm not giving out my login credentials with credit card details, my address, and full order history to a random fish I just met on the internet. I'm not making that mistake. Again. To do this the easy way, we need a browser plugin that takes screenshots of the web page via a keyboard shortcut. I'm using Fireshot and Firefox. They haven't burned me yet. And while I can hide the void on the web page by resizing the window, I can't hide the void of having no friends because I value puns over people. I'll manually save a PNG once. Now every time we hit Control Shift Y, it repeats that action. Now let's automate this routine so the computer can repeatedly bulk screenshot without us needing to be there. Well, the computer will be busy, which means we're free to go do something else away from the computer, like go look at another screen somewhere else. The YouTube analytics are very accurate, Brian. To automate the keyboard presses, I found an app called Auto Keyboard Presser. I wonder what it does. But for some reason, it didn't detect me pressing the shift key. So I had to open the editor and change the beta Y to a Chad Y. The editor saves as a plain text file, so it's super easy to edit the script for some other task in something like Notepad++. This limiter does nothing. I might as well ask one of my kids to stop doing something. I need you to do it. I can't stop. So you're going to have some duplicates of the last page to delete at the end. Once you have all your pictures in a folder together, there's a few options. Making a PDF is easy. Just select all with something like Control A, right click, print to PDF. I find the picture quality does go down a little bit when I switch to a PDF, but it is a much smaller file. Perfectly fine for something like text. But if you're doing a comic book or a graphic novel and you want the picture quality to be top notch, instead of printing, we're going to send it to a zipped folder and then change .zip to CBZ and now it's a comic book file. That was comically easy. Ubiquity can serve any of these files to your client devices like a Samsung smart fridge as long as it has a web browser or you can use an app like CD Display EX on Windows. So now that you've defeated the copy protection on Kindle files, you might want to check out one of these other videos for setting up Ubiquity so you can stream your books, or maybe you need to convert some real life books to digital. That was a journey.